Health Watch is presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare. Here, caring for you. Welcome to Health Watch, presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare. I'm Olivia Lemon. Tonight's topic is the treatment of breast cancer. What are the different types of breast cancer? The two major types of breast cancer that we treat all the time are called ductal invasive breast cancer and lobular invasive breast cancer. However, from the perspective of the patient, they are both treated exactly the same way. There are no differences. The issue, though, is in how they're detected. Ductal cancers probably make up about 80% of breast cancers. Lobular cancers, although they are more uncommon, they are also more difficult to pick up on mammograms. I describe it as like a ductal cancer is like a glass of milk, where you can see the shape of the milk in the glass. And a lobular cancer is as if you pour that glass of milk out on a table and the cancer grows in sheets instead of in balls or squares. So differences in uh, ability to detect on mammogram, but no differences in how we treat the cancer. Is the treatment the same for both types of breast cancer? One of the most important things that I tell patients at the very outset is you have choices in all of your treatment throughout every step of the way. So some patients, as hard as it is to believe, they may actually choose not to undergo any treatment at all. Or we may tell them, maybe it's best if we don't do anything about this right now. However, that's an extremely uncommon situation. We base our decisions on treatment on the size of the tumor, the stage of the tumor, whether it's spread to other organs in the body, whether it's spread to lymph nodes. There are other features of the tumor that help us decide what treatment a patient might need. So for instance, some, some tumors are very responsive to, um, to the estrogen and progesterone that's floating around women's bodies. Some tumors are not at all responsive to those hormones. So we adjust our treatment based on the tumor itself and not provide the same treatment to everybody who walks through the door. How often is surgery performed in the treatment of breast cancer? So surgery is almost always a portion of the treatment of breast cancer. It's not always the first step, but it's almost always in the mix. How has breast cancer surgery evolved over the years? When you look historically at how breast cancer was treated, every patient was treated not only with a mastectomy, but with what we called a, a radical mastectomy, mm -hmm. where m much of the tissue on the chest wall was removed. Over the course of the decades into the late 19, probably 1970s, we realized that that was not necessary anymore. So most patients now can be treated with lumpectomy. And then we also have changed the way we surgically manage lymph nodes under the arm. We used to remove all the lymph nodes under the arm. Now we usually can just remove a few and be done with it. So um, it's, it's become very much less of an invasive operation than it used to be. Newer techniques like cryosurgery are even being studied now such that patients maybe a decade from now might not need a major surgery at all. We can just put a little probe in the tumor, freeze the tumor, and be done with it. That's not yet ready for prime time, but it is on the horizon, I would say. I think that I would re-emphasize the fact that even after surgery is done, patients are, are given options about what combinations of these other things are provided. So a, a medical oncologist may recommend chemotherapy and what we call hormone therapy, where a, pill, a patient takes a pill that essentially cuts off the food supply to any tumor cell. And then the radiation oncologist may recommend radiation and the patient then may decide based on all the data that's provided to them that maybe they pick one or two of those things and um, and maybe they decline say chemotherapy or radiation therapy and we do that very carefully with patients we help them plan for their treatment very carefully so that we give them the best option for the longest survival or cure what is the follow-up after the initial treatment of breast cancer? Patients are followed very closely after they've been given a diagnosis of breast cancer. One type of breast cancer that I neglected to mention was the kind that is pre-invasive. It can't even get anywhere else in the body. Uh, that's called ductal carcinoma in situ, where it is, it is pre-invasive and can be managed very easily. And those patients may only be followed for a couple of years after their treatment. Other patients with a more extensive uh, diagnosis or more extensive stage, they are followed very carefully for decades after their diagnosis. And all along the way, many patients believe that they will require more frequent mammograms or uh, other imaging studies. Most of the time, it's just simply a yearly mammogram 
and then frequent follow-up with a provider. It begins very frequently if patients have chemotherapy, we follow them every few months. It then extends out to every six months. Then by the time they're about three years out, it goes to every year, and th that may go on for many years. Very important message for patients nowadays. We're all very afraid of breast cancer. It's heavily present in the media for very good reason. But when patients come into my office, I want them to know that there is hope, that there is, this is a much more curable disease than it was 50 years ago. And our cure rates are actually improving all the time based on the different chemotherapies that we have, the different hormone therapies that we have, the different surgeries that we do. It's no longer the devastating disease that it once was. We want patients to get screened very carefully every year. But uh, my, one of my biggest goals when a, a new patient comes in to see me is to make sure that they know that I have every expectation that they will be cured.